Hello and welcome to chapter 5, part 4. In this part, we are to carry on from our lose screen code from the previous part. In the previous part, we set it up so we actually can lose the game, but now we can set up a menu at the end for when we do lose to either tell the player to retry the level or quit the game. So in my UI folder, we're going to create a new widget. So right click, user interface, widget blueprint. I'm going to call this one lose screen and open it up. Now we're going to keep the chaos panel as is, but I'm going to change and add a text into it. This text, I want to be in the center of the screen. And this can be the message to the player saying they've lost. So I'm going to change its anchor to center. Next, I want to reset its position X and position Y by clicking on the little yellow arrows. Now notice that it's positioned it in the center, but the text block itself is positioned with the top left hand corner at its root. To change its alignment, you'll find the alignment settings on the right hand side. Type in 0.5 for both of these to set it completely central. Scroll down to the text field and we're going to put in a little message for the player saying you have lost. Scroll down further, change the size of this to say 60. And I'm going to change its justification to be center. So now we've got something that's completely centered in the screen. However, I'm going to raise this up a little bit. So we've got a space for our menu. So up the top, you'll see position Y. Make that a smaller number to raise it up. So drag it down and you'll see it rise up. I'm going to do negative 160. And there you have the message, nice and clearly in the center. Next, I'm going to create a little menu. So I'm going to drag in a vertical box. into my canvas panel. And much like we did with the text, we're going to put it in the center. So anchor it center, reset the positioning, change its alignment, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And I'm going to position it a bit lower in the center. So with the Y, we're to increase that like so. Now in there, I want to change the size as well and the in the X and Y. So the size in the X, I'm going to change to 300. And the size in the Y, I'm going to change to 300. Inside this vertical box, we're going to have two buttons. So find your button and drag it into your vertical box twice. The first button, you want to go to the right hand side and change its size from auto to fill. And this will cause it to fill the available space. Now if we go to button 2, we can change it to also to fill. And what that do, it will tell these two buttons to share the space evenly. Uh, with the second one button currently selected, we want to change its padding in the top. So open up your padding options for top, and we're going to type in a value of say 30. Actually let's change that to 60. There we go. So now with these two buttons. Now buttons also act like containers. So inside the button, we can put some text. So I'm drag it text into buttons there and drag another button, uh, text into that button there. This first button is gonna be called for the retry. So with the button selected, change its name on the details panel to retry button. And change the text inside of it to also say retry. On the next button, we can call that quit button. And again, changing the text in the middle of it to say quit game. Now we can also customize the appearance of these buttons. So I'm gonna select my retry button first of all, and go over to the details panel on the right. In the appearance section, you'll see loads of options for its various states, such as normal, hovered, pressed, and so forth. We're only interested in changing the background color. So find background color and click to change its color. I'm going to choose quite a dark gray and change its alpha to 0.8. Now to get this exactly the same on the quick game, I can drag from my thumbnail here up to the top here to save it. Click OK. 
I can then go to my quick button, open its background color up. I can see that saved color here. Click on that to get the exact same settings for it. So there we have our lost screen. Now it's coding these buttons to actually do what they are meant to do. So with the retry button, we're going to click on it and then scroll right down to the bottom. And in there, you'll see on clicked. Click this plus arrow to create a new event for on clicked for the retry button. To retry, we're going to just tell the game to open a level. And we're going to tell it to open the level that we're currently in for now. So maze one. This is the name of the asset itself. Click compile, go back to your designer, click the quick button again, and go to on clicked plus. Alternatively, you can also do it from the graph. Click on the quick button in the variable list here, and you've got access to its events on the details panel. Click on the plus to add the on clicked event. And then from there, we can just call the quit game function. Click compile. Close that, and we'll come back to that later. First of all, let's just get that showing on the screen when we lose. So we'll go to our game settings, into our maze game mode. Now after we remove the heads up display from the widget, we're going to delay the game code by two seconds. That will give time for our fade to finish fading, because that is set to a duration of two seconds as well. Once that duration that the, and that delay is finished, we are then going to create a widget and choose our loose screen. Now we don't need the reference to this, so we just need to add it to the viewport. Now let's click compile and test this out. So if I pick up the key, open the door. Be hit by three arrows. And here's our menu. Now I can't I currently choose these options. That's because our game mode, input mode, sorry, is set currently to game only. We need to tell it to allow us to interact with the user interface. So onto your game mode, after we add it to the viewport, we're going to get the player controller. And we're going to tell the player controller that it's no longer in game mode, but now in UI mode. So from there, set input mode to UI only. Plug that in, and there you go. Now you have an option for a widget to focus in. Um, I recommend just dragging the return value for now into there. Now that's setting input mode to UI. We also need an option to set the input mode back to game as well. And we'll do that when we retry the level. So go into user interface for the loose screen. Go to your code for your retry button. So either before or after open level, I'm going to do mine before. We're going to get the player controller. And set the input mode for that to game only. And that resets it back to a game control input. Let's just test out our loose screen now. Pick up the key, open the door. I'm going to get hit by three arrows. I'll get the loose screen and be able to retry or quit the game. Now I can click on these buttons, but notice the arrow isn't showing. To get the arrow to show, we need to tell it to actually show the input control. So what we could do is we can go onto our game mode settings again, and after we set the input mode, we can tell it to show the mouse cursor. So we say set show mouse cursor and turn that to true. We want to do it exactly the same but turn it to false on the loose screen when we retry the game. Set show mouse cursor to false. And there we have it. Our loose screen is finished. So join us in part five 
to do the other end of this for the windscreen. So when we get to the end of the maze, it gives us a congratulation message and allows us to proceed to the next level. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next part. Thank you very much for watching this episode. If you like what I do and you want to see more content before anyone else, please consider supporting me for at least a dollar over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. For just a dollar, you can get access to all these videos early before anyone else, sometimes well ahead of anyone else. And I'll take this moment to say a big thank you for all my supporters so far in supporting me in making this channel content. Wouldn't be doing this without you guys, so a big thank you to all of you. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.